Hi everyone, I'm Matt Clark, Research Analyst for Money and Markets, and joining me as he always does each and every week, it is a joy to welcome in Green Zone Fortunes co-editor Charles Sizemore, who is uh, broadcasting from his uh, family farm in Peru. So uh, we, we talk about this off camera, so if there's any strange noises, and if anyone wants to make note of the strange horse head trophies back behind Charles, that's why. Uh, we, we figured that the, uh, the year would not be complete uh, without wrapping things up with one more video uh, from the farm with the horse heads in the back. So Charles, uh, thanks uh, thanks for joining. Uh, hope you did have a great holiday. Uh, we're still kind of in the throes of the holiday as New Year's is coming up. Uh, so I uh, certainly hope you are enjoying things uh, down south uh, south of the equator. So, uh, Peru is south of the equator, right? It is. It is indeed. As I, I thought it was. I, I My geography was off a little bit. So, But today, um, you know, I, I want to talk about something that's going to be on the minds of, of, of many uh, millions of people uh, as we start into the new year, and that is, um, you know, preparing yourself, uh, you know, financially. Uh, there's there's a lot, and that's a loaded question. So I want to drill down and talk about the market, and then I want to talk about kind of personal finances, if you will, uh, in terms of what people can do to start kind of preparing uh, themselves uh, for who knows what happens in 2022. Another uh, maybe we we break free of, of COVID-19 and we get back to normal. Maybe we have three more variants. Uh, you know, maybe the market tanks. Maybe the market goes up. You just never know. None of us have a crystal ball. Maybe, maybe, maybe the movie plot of Twelve Monkeys comes true. The we all humanity dies, and you know has to live in bunk. You know, the, the, the remainder live in bunkers underground. I, I, who knows? There, there's no telling what we have in store for 2022. But I know that that you, with your your wealth of financial knowledge. Uh, can certainly give some pointers in terms of what people, uh, you know, no matter what your income is or, or what your uh, what your future savings uh, plan is or anything like that, you can provide uh, some uh, some beneficial tips to help people out. So let's start with the market. Um, you know, we, we've seen some very interesting things towards the end of the year. Uh, we had a strong bull market. We're still technically in a bull market, but we have seen some pairing back of all three major indices and stocks across the board uh, did drop a little bit from the middle of the month toward here towards the end of the month. Um, I'm not really sure what that means leading into 2022, but as an investor, uh, what are you doing to prepare yourself for, for the unknown of next year? So I've been sort of pulling away from buy and hold investing to more kind of active investing for the last couple of years now. Um, I do have that core of you know, good dividend paying stocks and I'm happy to just buy and hold and drop in a drawer and forget about and just let the dividends compound. But for a lot of my portfolio, I am staying a bit more short term. Uh, that actually works out really well. Um, we, that's kind of what we do at Money and Markets, Green Zone Fortunes, and, and our other services. We, we do focus more on short-term opportunities. And I think that's really what makes sense. Um, now, when you do that, you know, when you go from more of a long-term focus to a short-term focus, you do have to really keep position sizes. Um, you have to be very, how do I put this, uh, aware of your position sizes. For shorter term, there's this perception that you know shorter term trading is riskier than, than longer term investing, but that's not necessarily true. Shorter term trading can actually be less risky if you keep your position sizes reasonable and if you really have attention to risk. So um, I guess kind of that first you know tip: what am I doing, and, and what do I what do I recommend you know, for the new year? I would say with at least a decent piece of your portfolio, have a shorter term focus, you know, be prepared to trade more actively. There's money to be made in this market, but I think we are kind of nearing the end of the bull. Um, you know, we'll, we'll find out when we find out, but to me, it makes sense to have a short term orientation there. You know, realistically, we probably should have ended the bull market a couple of years ago, but as we've seen, uh, that it hasn't stopped. Uh, and, and even the Fed announcement of, of any uh, of any potential tapering or, or anything like that, uh, bond purchases uh, is going to start, but it's not going to end. So there's still going to be more capital from the Fed infused into the market uh, with the bond with the bond purchases at least until March. So at least through probably the first quarter uh, of 2022, we're still going to see some of that influx of capital. Uh, into the market. So, uh, you know, there, there, there hasn't scared off, uh, you know, investors yet when the announcement came out, the markets actually went up. So it, it hasn't warded off investors to say, okay, let's pump the brakes and let's maybe not buy as much or, or let's focus on a different strategy. Uh, it really hasn't changed. Now to, to you know, again, let, let's pivot that into what, you know, people can do. And again, this it doesn't matter whether you are uh, making 
uh, you know, thousands of dollars a month, or you're making not not thousand dollars a month, thousands of dollars a month, uh, in terms of saving and preparing and things like that. What kind of advice do you give uh, readers for their personal finances leading into 2022? Yeah, well, the first is the return you get from your investments is more than just price appreciation and dividends. Like that's what we get excited about. Hey, you know, the stock went up 10%, 100%, whatever. That's exciting. But that's only part of your return. Tax benefits, are all, they all also factor in. If you're using a 401k plan, an IRA, or some other, uh, an HSA, some sort of retirement, or I guess the HSA is not technically a retirement plan, but if you're using uh, one of those tax advantaged accounts, Every dollar you put into those accounts comes with a tax break. It lowers your tax bill at the rate of your marginal tax rate. That's a, that's a source of return. As far as I'm concerned, um, a, a, a dollar in taxes deferred is a dollar in taxes saved. If I'm not paying those taxes for 20 years, I, I'm, as far as I'm concerned, I'm not paying them. That's, that's so far in the future, it's, it's, uh, I'm not even going to worry about it. So. Um, Taking full advantage of those kinds of accounts is, a, is really a no-brainer. If you're nervous about the market and you're not really wanting to just go all in, just go long and strong and buy that index fund and be happy, no problem. You can still max out that 401k and just keep it in cash or money markets. Or uh, if, if it's an IRA, you can actively trade it. You can, you can, depending on the custodian you use and their rules or whatnot, Generally speaking, you can do anything in an IRA you can normally do in a regular brokerage account. So um, get that money in those accounts, you know, push it in there, get the tax break, and then figure out what you do with it later. If you're not ready to invest it, don't invest it, sit in cash, whatever, but get the tax break first. It, it's a, it's a no brainer. Yeah, I, I've, I've always loved the 401k and, and uh, more specifically because w- when you're with an employer that is willing to match, that's just free money for you. That, that's just additional dollars that you have that you can put into your account. That you can it's save an for. instant 100% return on, on that. You know, if they're matching 5% or whatever that number is, if you're putting in your first 5%, you just made a 100% return on your investment and you didn't take any risk. You could have put it in whatever, in money markets, and you still made a 100% instant return because of that matching. So that if you're not taking advantage of that, you might want to get your head examined because that, I mean, that's the equivalent of somebody just dropping a bag of money in front of you and you not picking it up. Uh, actually, if someone dropped a bag of money in front of me, I, I might not pick it up because I might assume there, there's some strings attached, right? Or there might be a mafia don wanting something in return, right? But It's entirely uh, possible, yes. But with the 401k, there's no strings attached. Um, yeah, don't leave that money on the table. Don't, 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 leave, don't the table. leave the money on the table. Uh, if the employer is willing to match up to 4%, put in 4%, that you, you have 8%, you double, you're doubling things up. It's just free money for you. Um, now, to, to kind of go back into stocks a little bit, you know, during this bull market run, we've seen a lot of new investors come to the table and a lot of retail investors uh, have really stepped up and have pumped a lot of money into the markets. We saw it with meme stocks. We saw it with, with crypto. With, it is technically a stock, but it is an investment. So we've seen a lot of new capital invested uh, into the market. And, and a lot of people are, are, you know, a lot of more um, traditional investors are trying to match that uh, and, and, and really adding their allocation uh, of, of their position in stocks. Is that necessarily wise at this point, since we really don't know what the tipping point is for the market and when and when and if it may happen in 2022? So there's an old trader's maxim that you should always sell to the sleeping point and, and sell to the sleeping point. What does that mean? It means if you have more, if you can't sleep at night, you probably have too much risk on. I would say something similar would apply here to all of our individual portfolios. If you're nervous about the market, then you have too much in stocks. You know, take some of it out, put it in bonds, put it in money markets, put it in short-term trading strategies where you can get in and out in a day or a week, whatever. Uh, but you know, don't be afraid to to take some money off the table. Uh, this has been a, a very peculiar bull market in that uh, it, it has been retail investors leading the way. The institutional money has been slow to participate. Um, that means one of two things. Either the institutional money is yet to come and they will come in and really push this thing higher for you know, perhaps one last hurrah, or the, re- the, the, the institutional money is the smart money. They're wisely sitting this out and the retail money is going to burn itself out here. 
We don't really know yet, but you know, if you're, you know, we're all trying to navigate this ourselves. We're trying to run our own portfolios, maintain our own wealth, hopefully grow it. Um, in that case, you don't have to be fully invested. If you're seeing your neighbors come, just, just go all in, you don't have to do that. You can keep some of yours in money market. You can keep some in bonds. You can keep some in shorter term strategies. It's fine. No one says you have to play that game the same way your neighbor does. Yeah, the key thing here is is you play your own rules and make but make sure you have rule set to begin with. If you're just going willy nilly. I can't believe I just used the word willy nilly. But if you go willy nilly, then you're, you know that's the, the first part of a recipe. Are, are, are you rolling up a newspaper and shaking it at the kids on your front lawn? Because that's uh... <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I haven't gotten to that point yet. I'm not that that old. Now, you know, the one other thing that I noticed, and I mentioned this before in, in a couple of podcasts and things like that, uh, and, and that is, you know, we're in a 24 hour news cycle. Uh, you know, the news comes at us at all hours of the day. And one headline, one tweet, even one one post on Twitter can change the market just like that. Yes, it can. But is that necessarily, does the smart investor pay attention to that? No, if you're in a stock or a crypto or whatever, and Elon Musk, you know, puts out a tweet that causes the value of this asset to go up, a, you know, whatever, 100% in a minute, take the win, you know, just be happy it happened, take the win, you know, sell half, sell all of it, whatever, to, you know, take some of that profit and just be happy you made free money. But don't expect back that it, that's a very hard game to play I mean, how do you front run what some celebrity's tweet is going to be i mean unless you have spies following them around like a paparazzi or something you, you don't you're not going to know right right um, so if you get lucky on something like that just be happy about it just say you know what sometimes you know sometimes you get lucky you, I like to think most of our returns are from research and, and hard work and, uh, you know, playing the game correctly. But once in a while, we get lucky, too. And, and that's fine. You know, it's, it's that's part of the excitement of investing is once in a while, you just, you know, roll the dice and you get that number you wanted. It, it's um, I, I hate to compare investing to a casino, but sometimes it feels like one. And yeah, I mean, win, you're, you're happy playing against yeah, you play against the house and sometimes you get lucky and sometimes you get to play with house money. And, and that's, uh, you know, that's the long and short. I think the bottom line of all this is, is that if you aren't already, uh, if, you're, if you want to be an active trader or if you are an active trader or at least semi-active or you're wanting to, you know, build your portfolio for retirement or for college or you know, for whatever your goals happen to be. Uh, the, the key here is that you want to have a strategy of, in place. You want to have rules to follow when to get in, when to get out, why to get in, why to get out. Uh, and, and you need to follow these rules. Having rules is fine, but if you don't follow them, it doesn't really matter. So I think the key right. overall here is that you want to have a rules-based system and, and they could be rules of someone else. I, I, I would strongly encourage anyone to look at Green Zone Fortunes, which is our, uh, our strong investment product that we have with money in markets. So uh, Adam, Charles, and I, uh, you know, we work very diligently every month to uh, give you our strongest pick based on several factors that we look at. Uh, we have our Green Zone Ratings uh, system, which is for free on moneymarkets.com. Encourage you to use that. But any kind of rules-based system that you can get into, they don't have to be, you don't have to have a long list of rules. You can have three. You can no, have and honestly, the, the simpler, the better. The, the simpler the rules, the more likely you are to actually follow them. Exactly. And if you follow those rules and, and, and you, you hold fast to that, I know that if I experience a 20% loss, I'm out. That's it. I'm done. I'm not saying that's my rule, but I'm saying if that is your rule and you hold fast to it, that's great. If you see a profit of 40% on an investment, you're immediately going to take profits either by selling half your position or selling all your position, depending on what, what your rule is, and you hold fast to it, you are going to see a profitable portfolio down the road. That is exactly, that, that yeah, is why. Well, and, and importantly, is importantly you, you will also avoid ruin. If you have good rules in place and you follow your rules, you're never going to take losses that are catastrophic. Uh, you will take losses. We all take losses, but you're not going to take catastrophic losses. So that is, that, that's it. You know, set realistic rules and follow them. So going into 2022, I think that's probably the strongest piece of advice that, uh, you know, Charles and I and myself, at least myself, I know Charles may have some stronger advice for you, but that I can impart on you is that 
uh, definitely, if you do not have any kind of rules in place for your trading strategy, um, you definitely need to get some. And again, I would encourage you to check out uh, Greens and Fortunes. Again, uh, shameless self-promotion for Charles and I, but uh, but we, we do a good job. It's been a proprietary system that's been in place for years. Um, it is uh, you know tested, world-renowned, uh, and, and it has proven itself. It's got a strong track record, uh, and we follow the rules. That, that's uh, we Adam Adam set forth rules. We follow these rules. We find the right stocks to fit at the right time. And there you have it. Um, and, and it's just that simple. It's not difficult. Um, so I would strongly encourage if you're not part of that to check it out. We'll try to put a link up uh, up here or here. I don't really know where the corner is, but we'll try to get that for you uh, uh, here on the, on our YouTube video. But um, Charles, any other you know information or any other you know words of wisdom to impart uh, on, on our viewers before we close out 2021? Yes. And I will point out that what you just did was not shameless self-promotion, but this is. You should really buy our prize-winning Peruvian Paso horses. <laughs> that is my financial advice for 2022. Actually, don't do that. Uh, horses no. are really expensive. And they're, if you want to go broke, buy horses. That, that's kind of that's, that's a guaranteed. You know, there are no guarantees in, in investing in finance. Buying horses is as close to a guarantee of bankruptcy as I can, as I can give you. I'm joking, but uh, sort of joking. But no, to sum this up, 2022, I think will be a transitional year. I, I think this is, it, it's going to be a year where the Fed is transitioning out of its extraordinary monetary policy. We are going to see a different kind of bull market, whether it's a bull market or the bull market just dies. You're gonna see a different type of, of market regime, regime in the next year here. So just be tactical, be willing to be a bit more short-term in nature and um, you know, just, just have rules and stick to them. Absolutely. And, and definitely, like I said, check out um, check out moneymarkets.com each and every day. We like uh, Charles, Adam, and I, uh, many others. We work hard to give you safe, sound, smart, simple, profitable investment information for your portfolio. Uh, Green Zone Fortunes, that is our premium service. Uh, and, and when I and I say premium, it is very well priced. It's it's very economical. It's not not uh, you're you're not you know you're you're not making it rain uh, to get the service and you get the knowledge of Adam, of Charles, and of myself uh, to to give you the best information we can. To bolster your portfolio, which is what we do. That's that's our reasoning. That's our rationale for doing it. It's not for us. It's it's for you. That that may sound you know kind of you know half hearted, but it's not. That that's really our mission. That's really what we want to do. We like it when we hear about people that have uh, come away with big profits based on uh, things that we have we have said uh, on information that we have given people. We love that. That's probably the best joy that we've had in 2021 is when we get emails and and. and and, and calls and things like that and say, hey, I took I took your recommendation and and I'm up. I made a profit of X. You really helped my retirement, whatever. That's something that just that that is gold for Charles and for Adam and for myself. So uh, definitely uh, love that. And that, that leads me into if you do have a question, uh, we're going to keep doing these videos next year. So uh, we've got much, much more on tap. Uh, for uh, Ask Adam Anything, Investing with Charles, The Bull and the Bear, and the Marijuana Market Update. These are all things we're going to keep going on to next year. If you do have a, a, a question or perhaps a stock or a sector that you'd like any of the three of us to take a look at if, for any one of our videos, uh, please, you can email us. That email address is feedback at moneyandmarkets.com. That email address will be right down there. Or you can comment below on our YouTube channel, either way. And if you do, if you do do that, I feel like, uh, I, I think it was Good Morning Vietnam. And if you do, and if you do... If you do use it, uh, one of my favorite movies, by the way, if you do, if you do send us a, a question or maybe a video of you asking that question and we kind of stitch it together in our videos, uh, then we are going to hook you up with some cool Money Markets gear. Uh, this t-shirt being one of them. Uh, I got this sweatshirt right here, which you can't really see, but I had on earlier because for some reason it's chilly in South Florida this morning. I don't really know what that's all about, but uh, I'm not real happy about it, but it is what it is. Um, hats, other things. We're pushing the boss to get more stuff, trying to tell him that it's time to stop your six month vacation and actually do some work. So uh, we're working on that to get you more. But if you do, like I said, send us a video uh, or if you email us a comment or question or anything like that, we will hook you up with some money market swag. Charles, uh, it's been a great 2021 and definitely looking forward to a very, very strong 2022. And everyone out there, thank you so much for watching all of our videos, whether you watch Investing with Charles, Ask Adam Anything, The Bull and the Bear, uh, the Marijuana Market Update, no matter what you watch or you watch them all, uh, we appreciate it. We love it. We do it because we're, we're out trying to help uh, help you create a safe, smart, uh, sound, simple uh, portfolio strategy to grow your wealth. So for Charles Sizemore, Greens on Fortunes co-editor, I am Matt Clark, research analyst for Money and Markets. Until 2022, everyone, safe trading. <laughs>